Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. And I'm here to tell you today, if you got a, somebody came in my office the other day crying, I said, look, don't cry to give up, cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain, you already hurt, get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me. I'm here to tell you today that you can come here, you can jump up, you can do flips, you can be excited when we give away money, but listen to me, you'll never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. You won't be successful until you say, I don't need that money. Cause I got it in here. So if you want to make six figures, you can't just be talking about you want to make six figures. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. You got to be willing to work off for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really want to be successful, some days you will have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you got to want it. You got to go days without, listen to me, you got to want to be successful so bad that you forget to eat. So listen to me, Emmett Smith said this at the end of the commercial. Emmett Smith said, all men are created equal, some work harder in free season. I'm going to say it again because you might have missed it. All men are created equal, some work harder in pre -season. So that means that there are some people who are going to see the professor, going to see the TA. And even when the professor says, I don't meet with you, my TA meet with you, you say, I don't want to talk to your TA. I don't pay the TA. I pay you to teach me. So you're going to have to find some time to meet me. If I got to meet you at the mall, if I got to meet you at your house, you are going to see me. Listen to me. All men are created equal. Some work hard in preseason. When I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0s, 3.0s. They went to the Ivy League high schools, came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about heart. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You got to have heart. That's number one. Watch number two. Number two. Catch number two. I wrote it down. I wanted to make sure you got it. It says... To be, watch this, watch this. We're talking about sacrifice now. The important thing is this. You're right in why I'm saying it. Because I only have about three more minutes. Listen to me. The most important thing is this. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. That's the number two thing. You got to catch that one. To be able to, listen to me, at any moment. Some of you, you can make sacrifices when Monday night football is not on. You can make a sacrifice. But when the game come on, for some reason, you just attach to it. For some of you, when your favorite show come on, you, you can be, you can make sacrifices on Sunday when there ain't nothing going on. But when your favorite show comes on Monday, bam, some of you, you focus into the phone ring and then you like, I gotta answer it. If I don't answer the phone, I'm gonna die. I'm saying to you today that there are some of you, if you give up your cell phone, you would be successful. But your cell phone is more important to you than your success. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to hurt somebody. I'm going to hurt somebody. Some of you need to give up your cell phone because the time you spend on your cell phone could be used for your success. The time you could be using to be successful, you're using it on the cell. And the cell phone is not bringing you nothing but a bill. And somebody has told you, you couldn't live without it. I'm talking about going deep now, giving up stuff. Watch what it says. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what we are for what we could be. I don't do well in math, you're right. You ain't never studied. I'm not good in writing because you have never written before. But I dare you to fail in writing for a whole year to see if you can get to the end. I dare you to fail. I dare you to take that same class over and over again. I dare you to stop dropping classes like you soft. Always want to give up. I'm dropping. Why are you dropping? 
I'm so grateful that the slaves didn't drop and quit. Say, I'm just going to stop. I'm a slave. I'm just going to be a slave. I'm going to quit. Listen to me. The slaves said we will live because one day we will become. See, whatever you're doing, however you spend your time, that tells you who you are. So think about what it is you like to create in your life experience. Once I look at how you commit your time, once I do an evaluation on how you spend your time, I can tell you exactly what you're committed to. How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? In the last 90 days, how many books have you read? In the last year, what new skill or knowledge have you acquired? What kind of investment have you made in you? A lot of people, as soon as they punch out, they rush home to sit on the couch. They rush home to do nothing. They rush home just to, to sit there and figure out, okay, I'm going to go to sleep, do it all tomorrow. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more playing. If you don't have a 4.0, what you need to be doing is studying. This is a life class. That means that we have an opportunity to learn how to maximize our lives. Think of the things that you're doing that somebody else could be doing. And think of yourself as a precious commodity that you are going to reserve your energy for your highest and best use. All the successful people have the exact same amount of time that you have each day. So what did they do that you may not be doing? They invested in themselves on the weekend, after work, in the evening. They put time in something that they wanted to do. They invested their own time in themselves. We are busier than any other generation we have seen in the last three to four hundred years. We are just as busy as we can be. And we think because we're busy, we're effective. But I want you to challenge your schedule for a minute and ask yourself, are you, are you really being effective or is your life cluttered with all kinds of stuff that demands you and drains you and taxes you and stops you from being your highest and best self? And are you substituting busyness and all the chaos that goes along with busyness from being effective? It takes time to be creative. You were meant to be creative. You were created in the likeness and the image of a creator. And in that likeness and in that image, you have creativity. If you had time, you would be creative. The most important thing is to value our time. So what are you going to do with this time? How much of it do you think you've already used up? What are you going to do today? The only thing that you can control that influences success in life is how hard you work, how honest you are, and how well you deal with others. You can control those variables. When you have a dream, and the dream isn't something you dream and then it happens, the dream is something you never knew was going to come into your life, Dreams always come from behind you, not, not right between your eyes. It sneaks up on you. But when you have a dream, it doesn't often come at you screaming in your face, this is who you are, this is what you must be for the rest of your life. Sometimes a dream almost whispers. And I've always said to my kids, the hardest thing to listen to, your instincts, your human personal intuition, always whispers, it never yeah. I mean, I've always, since I was um, 
in my late teens, early 20s, and I just never got around to it. I finally started realizing as I was getting older by, you know, my early 40s that I better really do it. It's either now or, or I'm never going to do it. We are here, and, and as you struggle to, to make your dreams happen, to live the impossible, we're thinking of you tonight. I think some people, and maybe I used to think once you got successful, you could, ah, you're successful and it's okay, and now you can kind of just relax a little bit, and, but that's not the case at all. You have to pedal even harder. You have to work even more. Um, there are more opportunities that need more uh, time and dedication, uh, and in order to do them well, you have to uh, really, really uh, hunker down and do the hard work. But I've never been afraid of hard work, and I always tell people mm, when I'm asked, and it's pretty often that I'm asked about uh, dreams and achieving uh, creative goals, uh, that I, I always believe that the, the bridge between reality and a dream is work. Um, and I always, in moments of despair and doubt and dark days, uh, focus on, on the work. I show up and I work and I work and I work and I work. C. D. F. 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 Three weeks we've been talking about the Platt Amendment. What are you people? On dope? What I'd like for you to do right now, I want you to think about your dream. Because I'm in a room full of dreamers. Think about your dream right now. I want you to think about it. And envision it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me share something with you. I do not believe that any of us have dreams that were not given to us for the purpose of accomplishing those particular dreams. And I want to share something with you that has changed my life. I started out, as was indicated by Jack, some very humble beginnings. I don't know what that dream is that you have. I don't ha care how far-fetched it might appear to be. I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream. But here's what I know. That that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible. See, sometimes we can't say, I can do that. But what we can say, that it's possible that I can have my dream as we run toward it, as we work on it day in and day out. No one, ladies and gentlemen, could have convinced me when I started out just over six years ago working on my dream. And I want you to think about whatever your dream is. Because I was willing to take a chance, and most people won't do that. Most of the people that you talk to to try and bring them into the business, these are not risk takers. Most people have done all that they're ever going to do. They raise a family, they earn a living, and then they die. But people who are running toward their dreams, life has a special kind of meaning. And here's what I will share with you, that in the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur, incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain, a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you will realize is that you have greatness within you. I don't have any college training, but I met a high school teacher who one day changed my life. I was waiting on another student, and when he came in, he said to me, young man, go to the board and write what I'm about to tell you. And I said, I, I can't do that, sir. And he said, why not? I said, I'm not one of your students. He said, it doesn't matter. Follow my directions now. I said, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, because I'm educable, mentally retarded. And he came from behind his desk and he looked at me. He said, don't ever say that again. 
someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. If you want to make your dream become reality, the people that are running at their dreams know that it's possible that you can live your dream. That it's necessary, that you're relentless, that you have a plan of action, that you are creative. The people that are living their dream are finding winners to attach themselves to. The people that are living their dream are the people that know that it's, if it's going to happen, it's up to them. And they're resolving within themselves, it's not over until I win. It takes the dream, because if you don't have the dream, you'll never find the seven to ten hours a week. I can guarantee you that. You're busy. We're all busy. You're working. You're picking up the dry cleaning. You're making dinner. You're taking the kids to football practice. You're paying the bills. you got to sleep. you got to eat. All this. You're using 24 hours of every day already. So what's got to get you? have got to find a dream, something that will take you to the frame of mind where you will change the way you live, you will change the daily actions you take, and you will change your mindset for a two to four year period you got to set yourself up to win you got to set yourself up with a process that allows you to consistently grow consistently enjoy your life and consistently produce the results that you're really after somebody told you that hard work don't pay off I'm here to tell you if you work for it if you willing to put in that sweat that blood and those tears baby I'm telling you you can have what you want be what you want do what you want are you hearing me keep going till you see don't quit. Don't give up. Listen to me. Don't give up. Don't give in. You hang in there. You hang in there because if you quit right now, you ain't going to never see it. But if you hold on, if you hold on, everything you dreamed of, everything you envisioned, everything you worked for, it's coming. But you can't quit or give up before you get it. If you work hard, you can't have it. It ain't nothing you can't have. You deserve it. It ain't nothing you can't have if you're willing to work for it. It ain't nothing you can't have if you're willing to persevere, if you're willing to stick in there, if you're willing to stay, if you're willing to fight. It ain't nothing you can't have. Are you hearing what the boy is telling you? It's yours. It's yours. I'm coming. I'm telling you. It's yours. You can have it. It's yours. You can do it. It's yours. You can be it. It's yours. If E.T. can do it, listen to me. Anybody can do a high school dropout, homeless, lived in abandoned buildings, 12 years to get a four year degree. If you want it, if you want it as bad as you want to breathe, if you really, really want it like you say you want it, you can have it. This ain't for the weak and the uncommitted. Are you hearing me? Success is not for the weak and the uncommitted. This is physical. Sometimes it's going to hurt. Sometimes it's going to be painful. It's hard. Yep, it's hard. Yep, it's difficult. Yep, why? Because the process is weeding out the weak. It's weeding out the weak. And so sometimes you got to play hard. You got to play physical. You got to play tough. Execution is worship. You got to get to a place that when you start it, you get through the middle of it, the doldrum, and you finish it. Are you hearing me? And not just finish, you finish strong. Listen to me very closely. Most of you, the reason why you'll never be successful is because you procrastinate. You procrastinate. You never finish stuff. Don't get caught up in, well, I've tried it four or five times and things didn't work out. If there's something that you want and you're hungry for it, you've got to do whatever is necessary until. And when you give the best you can and that's not enough, you must do what is required. And don't give up on yourself. Don't throw the towel in so quickly. The secret to success is finishing. Execution is worship. Are you hearing me? Oh, you better hear what I'm telling you, baby. Listen to me very closely. Execution is worship. I was getting D's and F's and the world was telling me I was a loser. My, my teachers were telling me a loser. My friend's parents weren't saying to my face that I was a loser but I could see it in their eye. Like I used to sit there as a 13, 14, 15, 16 year old and look at my class and my teachers and I'm like, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show all of you. You think I suck? I'm gonna be the biggest, best person on earth. I come here to remind you that there's only one thing you can do. The only thing you can do, the only thing that can trump your DNA, the only thing that is controllable, if you want it, 
if you want this, is work. Work. Like,